Cinderella by Taylor Redmond. Cinderella lounged in her throne, drumming her fingertips impatiently on the armrest. Pale grey sunlight shone in shafts through the stained glass windows in the opulent cathedral. She cast a lazy glaze at the hordes of people, all laying prostrate at the ground around her. The masses terrified breaths were the only sounds punctuating the heavy silence. Thunder rumbled in the distance, rattling the glass in their panes. Heavy raindrops pattered on the ceiling. The wind howled through the cracks of the front door. Cinderella grit her teeth. The gathering storm was naught but a whisper compared to the tempest she would unleash upon this world. The giant oak doors flew open, carried by the gusts of gale. The candles in the chandelier blew out, leaving trails of smoke wisping in the air. The dark clouds smothered the remaining sunlight, casting everyone in the barest rays of light. A silhouette stood in the entrance. Cinderella stopped drumming her fingertips, crossing her legs as she sat up. Finally, that doddering old fool was late. The Pope shuffled forward slowly, his frail body crooked with age. She locked eyes with him, his face paled as he averted his gaze down to the ground. She wondered if he knew she'd eat him tonight. She barely repressed a mirthless laugh. It didn't matter if he did for all that mattered was what he held aloft before him. The crown. The ornate hunk of metal enraptured Cinderella's gaze. Of course, she knew it was nothing but an empty symbol men used to imitate power. She had demonstrated strength tenfold greater. However, with the crown came a new title proclaimed to all. The people needed a new name to fear. A shimmer of light stung Cinderella's eyes. What was left of the sunlight had reflected off the many gems encrusted within the crown. For the briefest moment, her hardened heart softened. The glimmer reminded her of simpler times, of glass slippers, of that naive, foolish girl who believed that love existed. She remembered how that girl felt that magical night, the silver moonlight bathing the two of them in its warm embrace. The way the prince's shining eyes beckoned her into letting her heart melt within herself. For the first time in her life, a foreign sensation had taken hold, a soothing glow that spread from her chest all the way to her fingertips. Had it been happiness? Magic and love had been so real, so wondrous that night. Then the clock struck midnight. The spell was undone, the grasp of passion unhanded. She'd sprinted down the palace steps in haste. A glass slipper had fallen off one of her feet as she scrambled back to the carriage. She remembered cradling the remaining slipper against her breast on the melancholy ride back to her dreary home. She'd surrendered herself to despair. The fleeting happiness shrank to nothing but a burning memory branded to her heart. But then... Against all hope and reason, the prince had found her, slipped the glass slipper on her foot. A perfect fit, a perfect life, a happily ever after. Full. The Pope had barely made it a quarter of the way to the throne. Cinderella tapped her foot irritably on the ground. She wanted to rage at the Pope to hurry up, but no. Let his slow walk to her act as the calm before the storm. She turned her head to the side. The slightly smaller throne next to her sat empty. It had used to be hers, but she preferred the one she sat in now. Prince Charming's throne would act as the foundation for her empire for a time until she would melt the both of them. She tensed her body in an attempt to staunch the bloodlust, but even she had her limits. The ground trembled. Electricity crackled in the air. The ocean outside the cathedral lashed the walls in its fury. It hadn't been there the night prior, having flowed into the crater she'd left in the wake of her last rampage. Her heart thundered in her chest, 
Her breaths grew ragged. Her vision blurred just at the thought of that accursed man. He who had taken all from her. She remembered when the man she'd swooned for became the beast who terrified her. He'd whisked her away on the opulent carriage. Her heart soared as she gazed at the retreating frame of her stepmother's household. Her dreams had come true. Her days of longing for a fairy tale were over. The man sitting next to her would take her hand and guide her to a promising, bright tomorrow. The wedding ceremony had rivaled the ball she had met the prince in. She remembered staring down the length of the very same cathedral she sat in now, but on the opposite side. Her heart hammered in her chest, the citizens all standing, eyes all cast at her cheerfully. The prince standing at the end of the aisle, his inviting smile. Oh, that dreadful smile. So dangerous in how it elicited that warmth in her belly. The Pope had led her down the aisle to give her away. Her legs had been so weak, it was as if she glided. It had been so surreal as she finally stood across the prince. Only the warm sunlight caressing her cheek reminded her that it was real. They said their vows. The lump in her throat almost choked her as she whispered, I do. She could still remember the feel of his lips on hers. Then the clock struck noon. The king rose from his throne. He spoke only three words, but they were powerful enough to end the dream forever. Consummate the marriage. Consummation. The filthy word was nothing but rape dressed in the flowery language of royalty. That naive girl, who'd spent her life trapped in her stepmother's cruelty, didn't know what that word meant. The prince had been a rough teacher that night. A purple brand of lightning struck the cathedral, rending the painted glass to cinders. A torrential downpour splattered the cathedral grounds. The gale of wind spread the shards upon the citizens who dared not make a sound. Cinderella placed a hand over her heart to calm her rage. She had to control herself, at least for now. She crooked a bony finger at the Pope who stood cowering in the rain, falling into the cathedral. He gasped and shuffled along, now halfway to the throne. A sea of clouds rippled across the sky like waves. Cinderella glanced up. Through the gaps in the storm, she glimpsed the sun being swallowed by the eclipse. The dark orb slid over the celestial body, drowning all in a blanket of darkness. The only light came from the dark red rim of the eclipse's edge. The cathedral wallowed in a dull, crimson glow as the shadows danced and schemed on the walls. A shrill cry pierced the silence. Cinderella's gaze snapped onto the source. A young boy, hair tousled and curls wailed as his mother frantically tried to silence him. Cinderella tightened her fist. Another shaft of blinding lightning struck into the crowd, silencing the child as he crumpled lifelessly to the floor. The mother dared not even cry, instead throwing herself back on the ground. Not a shred of remorse graced Cinderella's hardened heart, only envy. Child. There was a time when she thought a son would reignite her love. After that dreadful night, the prince had been gentle to her. His gaze would always soften a touch when he glanced at her growing belly. Even on the rough nights, she would take comfort at the new love developing within her. The baby boy of hers would make everything all right. Then the clock struck midnight, casting her into the nightmare. A brand of agony had awakened her in the dead of night. Her ladies-in-waiting had rushed in the midwife as Cinderella gasped for breath. A terrifying sensation overtook the torture writhing in her body that night. A horrific thought pierced the veil of her pain. I can't feel him moving. She remembered begging her maidens to bring the prince to her chambers. How could she go through this alone? Between waves of labour, she received the dreadful news. The prince was not to be bothered. 
he would come and once the boy was delivered. Cinderella had no time to cry as the next wave crashed upon her. A weak dawn had risen when the torture stopped. Cinderella craned her neck, hoping against hope to hear her son's cries. The hollow eyes of the midwife and the silence between her legs told the story. She was a pretty girl, your majesty. She had spoken in a quavering voice. She moved to withdraw from the room, the lifeless child still in her arms. Put her in the cradle, Cinderella whispered. But, your majesty, if you don't unhand my daughter this instant, you will forfeit your hands, Cinderella growled. The midwife's eyes bulged as she placed the limp baby into the cradle and scurried out of the room. The prince didn't bother to visit her that day. Cinderella let sorrow rack her body, the sobs beat in her chest, her wails echoed across her chambers like a dying beast. Exhausted, her throat raw, she had taken to rocking the cradle all throughout the day. In her denial, she thought of a name for her daughter, what could have been. The sun set, letting the moon spill its ethereal light through the slits in her curtains. The silver light cast her daughter in shadows. In the luminous glow, her frayed mind thread hope from delusion. Her daughter wasn't dead. She was just sleeping. Cinderella stroked her daughter's cold skin. My sleeping beauty. Still in her nightgown, she fled her chambers and flew across the hall. The prince had to know the good news. A tingle took hold within her stomach almost like the time she walked down the aisle. Her heart ached to see that smile again, to feel that same magic once more. Just once more would do. She threw open the door to the prince's chambers and locked eyes with a naked blonde woman. Cinderella dragged her shocked gaze from the much younger woman before her to the prince laying naked on the bed, to the glass slippers the young harlot wore her glass slippers. Cinderella's hopes and delusions gave way to crushing reality. A hollow pit opened within her. She had no tears left to fill it. Only wrath. Without a word, she clutched a handful of the harlot's blonde locks and dragged her kicking and screaming to the balcony. She slammed her head on the railing with a horrific crack. Cinderella snatched a leg in each hand and flipped the shrieking girl off the platform, sending her wailing down countless stories as a glass slipper flew from her foot. The slipper tumbled on the ground, cracks running all along its surface. With trembling fingers she picked it up. The reflection displayed a woman who'd long since died. A shadow flew over her. She raised her eyes to meet the furious gaze of the prince looming over her. Disgust and anger etched themselves on his face, but they were nothing but a whimper compared to her own. Just as her foot had once found a good fit in the glass slipper, the prince's neck found itself a good fit for the slipper's heel. The prince dropped to his knees, scrambling at the broken shard of glass puncturing his throat, Cinderella didn't even resist as they dragged her to the execution chamber. The fireplace behind Cinderella's throne crackled and roared into flames at her beckoning. No warmth emanated from the blaze, only a fierce light that illuminated the Pope's wrinkled face as he approached within a couple of feet of her. She bit her lip in anticipation, a trickle of blood flowing down her chin. So close. Clouds of rubble rained on the crowd as the ground shook, almost as if the earth itself recoiled in horror. Cinderella glanced up at the sky once more. The storm had since formed a raging vortex around the cathedral, allowing a clear view of the heavens. Giant, gaunt fingertips gripped the edge of the eclipse. Deep, ominous cracks carved its surface. Bulging veins sprouted through the sky as a bloodshot eye peered through the celestial horror. Her daughter strained to wake up. Not yet, Aurora. Be patient, darling. 
Her other hand gripped her scepter in a strangling grip. She threw an almost reverent look to the staff she clutched. More so, the wand that was encased inside. Cinderella allowed herself one more reminiscence under her old name. She had sat on the filthy floor of the execution cell. The waning moonlight told her there would only be a couple more hours before she would be led to the gallows. To her surprise, no fear or despair took hold of her heart, only rage. Suddenly, a brilliant flash filled the room, nearly blinding her. As she rubbed her eyes, her gaze took notice of the fairy godmother hovering above her. She clutched her wand in both hands, her plump aged face lined with worry. I'm so sorry, my dear. Happiness is a fickle thing, but worry not, darling, for you shall receive another chance at all. With a wave of my wand, I'll whisk you out of here. Where? Cinderella whispered, her voice echoing off into a hiss of the cell walls. I'm sorry? Where have you been? Cinderella flew at her, clutching each of the elderly woman's shoulders in her talon-like grips. The fairy made no attempt to wriggle free, a tear forming in her eye. I'm so sorry, my dear. I can only appear to you when you are truly alone. But believe me when I say, I want nothing more than your happiness. Happiness? Cinderella almost choked at the word. Look, look into my eyes. Gaze into my heart, bereft of love. And you tell me what happiness could ever blossom there. Her gaze bore into the godmother's watery blue eyes. The fairy's face crumpled into despair as the seconds ticked. I'm, I'm so sorry. The loss, it's too much. I have failed you, my child. The godmother's body faded into nothing as Cinderella's palms slapped against the cell walls. Before she could even blink, the fairy's body disappeared completely, her final sob echoing off the tiny chamber. Cinderella dropped her gaze to the floor. The dainty wand of the fairy lay on the ground, the shimmering tip emitting a pale light. She bent down and picked it up. The tiny pinprick of light blazed into a fierce orange, then crimson red, then into a white flame. Power and strength rushed into her body, her heart burst, releasing a malice, her cruelty, and something else straining to be free. She surrendered herself to the sensation, allowing the beast born from the shell of her heart to consume her. That night, the castle burned in the teal flames of her wrath. The citizens could do nothing but cower in the behemoth's rampage. Her shadowy wings cut across the full moon, her inhuman mouth opened into a cavernous abyss. Her roars shook the very foundations of the kingdom itself. That night, the people witnessed true terror. Finally. Finally, the Pope stood before her. Cinderella rose, towering over the frail man. Y Your Majesty, if you would please kneel... Cinderella didn't respond, instead casting him in her haughtly glare. Her days of kneeling were but a distant memory. The Pope swallowed as he straightened his back with a pop. He raised the crown above his head and brought it onto her own. As it passed her sight, she glimpsed her reflection. Where there had once been gentle cheeks, there were now cruel and shadowy bones. Where there had once been eyes alight with hope, there were now hollow pits, where there had once been a warm smile, there were now bared teeth. Cinderella had died that night, a scaly hide had grown over her heart, a beast writhed in her chest, begging to be free. Tonight, the world would burn in the fires of her malcontent, those who emerged from the ashes would have the privilege of fearing her new name. The Pope cried out for all to hear as he crowned their new tyrant. Long live Empress Maleficent. A shriek tore through the air, the sobs flowing in the wind. Thick drops of blood rained from the heavens. The masses screamed in terror, scurrying like rats. The Pope dropped to his knees, 
his wide eyes locked on the abomination dripping down from above. Maleficent licked the blood on her lips. Ah, my poor, dear Pope. Look what you've done. You woke my daughter up. Thick tendrils spilled out of the eclipse as the wrinkled hands ripped the sky asunder. Shards of the heavens crashed to the earth, plunging the world into eternal night. Only the blushing red of the crackling fireplace provided light. The threads of darkness tangled themselves all about Maleficent. She smiled as she caressed her daughter's hair. The cries in the air ceased. Silence was total. The Pope's eyes rolled up inside his head. Wake up, my sleeping beauty. Your dawn approaches, Maleficent whispered. A newborn heavens illuminated themselves with a blood-red glow. Maleficent turned to the east. A singular eye rose as the new world sunrise. The foreign sensation, that same magic, took hold of Maleficent's heart as she basked in her daughter's glow. Happiness. Did you have a lovely dream, my dear? I just want to thank Taylor Redmond, aka Butts the Slack Gordsman, for allowing me to narrate that story. If you liked what you heard here, please show the author some love in the comments below. If you're new here, please consider subscribing, and as always, stay tuned for one more nightmare.